What's up, players? We're back for part two of this thing called test review. Open top box, raindrop, drop top, open box. Uh, you have this cut with small congruent squares forming a 10 by 10. So let's draw a little square, you know, something light, a little square. Maybe it looks like that. And so what this is doing is saying that, yo, we want to fold up. We want to take out a little chunk in each little corner so that even though this starts out as two dimensional, we want to say that it should fold up to a nice little box. Nice little box with a square base. And I'm even going to go on camera to show you what I'm talking about. So I don't think I've gone on camera at all this year. I think because I don't know, I'm growing my hair out and it looks crazy most days, but this is a flat, like two dimensional version of the box. Notice how there's a square cut out here and here. And the goal is that you want to fold this up so that it makes a three dimensional looking box. You heard me. So what can you say? You could say that this should be 10 and that you're going to cut out these little squares of X's. And this should also be 10, of course, not uh, clicked to scale. But when you fold this up, this means that this is 10 minus 2x, because these x's are lost. 10 minus 2x, this is x. So why is this helpful? Because the volume of this is really going to be taking this times this times this, which is x multiplying with 10 minus 2x being squared. Capiche? So that is going to be the volume that you graph out. Sometimes you'll see this called V of something or A of something, like you're trying to get uh, some type of characteristic with some variable in mind. So this is what you want to graph out. I can quickly say something about the domain because you have what appears to be two factors here, but this has multiplicity of two, and that's a, another story that we've talked about. But I know for sure that the important information on this graph is going to occur between zero and five. And so I'll even make a note that that's my domain. And you might be asking, how do I know that's five? Well, silly. If you take 10 minus 2x, set it equal to zero, you're going to eventually say that x is five. And that helps because it means that the graph should do something maybe not parabola like this. Maybe it's like Maybe something like that, you know? Um, but when you graph this, it's going to kick back some x coordinate, and that's going to be the square that's cut out, and it's going to kick back a y coordinate, which is going to be your potential volume. And I hope that's enough for you to push through this. Next problem. We're back at the ranch, we have two adjacent rectangular corrals. So let's copy and paste that, not do that. What did I do? Where did it go? Undo, please. I'll just make a new one, fine. You have a rectangle like that. Copy, paste. And you are connecting this with copy, paste, like make two of them, you know? Yeah, let's call this the minion ranch minions so chill uh and you know that all of your fencing should equal 200 you did a problem like this in 4.2 and so let's say that this has a y coordinate for the height and that your width from here to here is all x so you can make one equation about this which talks about the amount of fencing you can say that you have the two widths of x plus the three heights of y, what should that equal? What do you think? Hopefully you're saying 200. And so that's a nice equation to hold on to. But we also want to make a second equation, which is talking about the area. So we can say that our area, when you really think about it, this is just a rectangle with a little divider in the middle, but it's still a core fundamental rectangle, which is base times height. So what do you want to do here? You then want to take this equation 
and solve it for either X or Y. It's up to you which one you want to do. But I'm personally going to solve for Y, I think. Yeah, let's solve for Y. Because Y is going to be what? 200 minus 2X all over 3. So notice where we started. We made this equation first. We just talked theoretically about this property that it was discussing, the area. We then are solving our first equation for x or y. Key thing is that you want to isolate one of the variables. And you know this can be done because you have not it all set equal to some number. And then our fourth step, plug in that to what equation two is. So now we can hop back and say that our area, and maybe you think you're crushing it and you call it A of X, which is safe to say, because you're saying that your X multiplies with Y, and instead of Y, you're now saying that this is 200 minus 2X over three. So let's graph that and see what we get. But I can tell you right now that it's going to be a parabola with a root at zero, a root at 200 over two, that's 100. And then you're going to have that middle 50 be the height of the parabola or the max of the parabola. And so this is helpful because we now know that the max area will occur when our width is 50. And that leaves our y coordinate, which yes, we can solve for if you plug back into here. You could say that you know y is going to be 200 minus 2 times 50 over 3. So your y coordinate is going to be 100 over 3. And so why does that help us? It helps us because we know that this middle width height is going to be 100 over 3. This is 100 over 3. This is 100 over 3. And we can get a hold of our area if we do 50 times 100 over 3. So what's that? 5,000 over 3. So our max right here occurs when x is 50. And when the area is totally 5,000 over three. Capiche? That's what's happening. Honestly, you could have done this and integrated too if you really knew what you were doing. Um, so this is something you did early on in unit five. Closed rectangular base. Um, you have to make two equations for this square base. So I'm not even going to sketch this one out because um, you have a square base and it's closed. So what are you trying to make? The volume. So that's saying that x squared times your height equals 2,250. You could solve for h in this case. I think that's the quickest path of least resistance. And then you need to make a cost equation. This is a huge thing. This is not making surface area. So let's break this down. You know that it's $2 per square inch for the top and bottom. So it's two bucks for those two bases of X squared. So think of this as like the top and also the bottom. Because again, these are congruent sides. So that's why I can get away with saying this is X, this is X, this is X, this is X. And then we want to add on $3 per square inch for what's left over, which is just going to be x times h for one of them. But remember, you have four of them. OK, capiche? And so this is going to be your cost. You can take this, put it in place of this h. You're going to figure out some graph. It's going to have a minimum. I don't know where it is, but I'll leave you to graph what should be four versions of x squared plus 12 versions of x times 22,000, or sorry, 2,200, 500 over x squared. So graph that. 
get your min, say what the domain is, move on with your life. Oh yeah, just for closure on this, your domain for this graph was from zero to 100. But you probably already knew that. Cool. 18 foot ladder rescuing from there, top of the ladder resting, base of the ladder is nine feet away from the building. So you got your ladder, you got your building here. Let's make this actually look like a ladder. You know, this is nine. It's like, you know, this is 18. The uh, older parent at home for them. Can I not erase? Why can't I undo it? It's so weird. All right, so this is 18. This is nine. What's the angle? Okay, I mean, I can tell you right now, this is probably gonna be 30, 60, 90, because this should be a right angle from here to here. And if the hypotenuse is double this side, that means that across from the smallest side is 30. And that means this would have to be 60, although it's not asked of you to decide on how high up the ladder goes from the ground. It's nine root three. So what's the angle the ladder makes with the ground? 60. You could have also gotten away with doing cosine of your angle inverse, like not inverse. I mean, now, yeah, let's actually back that up a little bit. Because if you run through all the trig ratios, you end up creating this one, which says that cosine of the angle you wanted should be equal to nine over 18, which is half. And if you do cosine inverse, of course, make sure your calculator is in degrees. This is gonna kick back 60 degrees is your outcome. If you're not convinced, try it but you could use a mix of your special right triangles knowledge, or you can use trig inverse knowledge to get through this one. Hope that one makes sense. I really like these problems. You know your two legs, so you could bang out a quick Pythagorean theorem. You could then take this further this is actually a Pythagorean triple because all three numbers are nice, convenient whole numbers. And so we see that side length C is 10. So how does that help us? Because we know that this is eight, this is 10, A is six, add these up. So our perimeter is 24 centimeters. Now let's get some angles. So we could, say, yeah, let's do this. Let's do that sine of angle B should be equal to eight over 10, right? So that means that if you do sine inverse of eight over 10, that's gonna equal angle B. So do this in your calculator real quick and see what you get, because that's gonna help us piece together the rest of this. All right, I got a little uh, greedy knowing what to do here. So if you bang out this in your calculator, it gives an approximation of 53.138 degrees. You can then solve angle A, because you know that you already have accounted for the right angle of 90 and the 53.13. So that's how I got angle A. I guess you could have also just done 90 minus B and that would kick you back angle A. So that's another hack. And this is the area. Notice how I use these units. I think that's a pretty good example. Uh, this one's a little bit more challenging, but I don't think these are too bad once you've done one or two of them. And I'd say that this is one you should definitely consider doing quite a bit until you get them. So what am I doing here? I am saying that, yeah, this is a triangle, but now I see two triangles. And why is that helpful? helpful to us. Because if I draw this line that cuts through here, this is already 45, this is 90. So that means this has to be 45. And so that doesn't quite help us yet, but it will in a second. 
because over here, we can now say that if this is 90, this is 40, what should this angle be? Hopefully you're saying 50. And that's a safe move. So what can we do here? If we wanted to get what this height's gonna be, don't be afraid to redraw these if you need to. You can say that if this angle A is 40 degrees, and this is 50, you know this is 15. So if you run through some trig ratios, you can say that sine of 40 should be equal to, let's call it question mark over 15. And so how do you think you can solve for question mark? If you multiply everything by 15, do that to everything. So this is saying that 15 sine of 40 degrees equals your question mark. And what is that approximately? 15 sine of 40, 9.64 approximately, which makes sense. It's smaller than 15, so that's a good thing. 9.64 feet. So, well, how, yeah, I mean, how does that help us? I mean, eventually it'll help us for this, but for right now, it doesn't quite help us, but at least we know that this leg is 9.64, which can allow you to solve for this. You have Pythagorean theorem as an option if you want to entertain that, or if you want to proceed with more trig, you could say that cosine of 40 degrees is your adjacent. So that's from here to here. It's not the whole bottom of the triangle. Don't get it twisted. So you can say that this is, let's call it question mark two over 15. So burn through this. And so now you can say that 15 cosine of 40 is gonna be that, so 11.49. So how does that help you? You might say, oh, it doesn't really, because I'm looking for C and for A. However, if you take that intel back to this triangle, you can say that this is congruent to this. This is C, this is B. You can say that this height, you know it now, it's 9.64. And that means that this should also be what? 9.64. And that means that this, 9.64 times root two, because again, this is what kind of triangle Kind of triangle is this 45 45 90 so get those ratios down or just the pattern down really and so what can we now say we can say that a little a is 9.64 feet 15 is b side length c for the larger triangle is the sum of this and this so 9.64 plus 11.49, I'll leave that to you. And then if you wanna add all of those up, this is what, two versions of 9.64 plus 15 plus 11.49. You know angle C is the sum of these two angles, so that's 95. And angle B was already given to you as 45. The area you can get if you do one half C times A, which is 9.64. I will leave that to you, Capiche. How much more is in this? Oh, my God. Uh, this is good practice. Bisect this. What else can you say? About this, you could set up this little trig ratio where this is 12.9 and this is 42.3. This is a right angle. I think this is what, like 47.7 degrees because this has to be a right triangle. Um, you could get a hold of this if you do sine 
12.3 times 12.9. So that'll kick back that. I'm not gonna talk too much in detail about this because it's kind of like the other two problems. You can get a hold of part of this if you do same song and dance, but with cosine. And then you can use that information to help you figure out C, B, as you'll know that this is a cosine of 42.3. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You know that this is gonna be the same length as that. I'm gonna leave that for you. Area of a square whose diagonal has length of six. So it means that there's a side length or a cut through this square. You should actually draw like a real square, like a normal person, not a psycho kindergartner. And that's a, oh yeah, oh my God. That's, that's what dreams are made of right there with that square. This is eight. If it's a square, you're able to say that this angle is congruent to this angle, congruent to that, congruent to that. Make sure you get there, Miss Hemmler. So eight, congruent, congruent. This is 45, 45, 90. That means this is eight over root two, eight over root two. So what's the area gonna be? It's eight over root two times eight over root two. And pre-calc, you'll eventually see that this should really be rewritten as four root two. I'm not gonna dive too much into why, but the area of the square is gonna be four root two squared, which is really 16 times two, which is really 32 centimeters squared, capiche? All right, R equals 10 pi. So your radius is five. Oh my God. So your radius is five, which means that your diagonal is 10. So now 10, and this is 10 over root two, 10 over root two. Oh my God, that was a huge blooper, but I'll keep it because you know what, I'm human. And that's what life's all about, messing up and then just trying to do better. That's all we can do. Okay, so pi r squared minus this square, which is 10 over root two, square that. So this is 25 pi minus 100 over two. Long story short, 25 pi minus 50 centimeters squared. And this is where I should really end the video. That was pretty bad uh, blooper. Uh, if you need help with the others, let me know. Talk soon. Best of luck with this. Reach out if I can help. Take care. Brush your hair.